Good morning, everybody. It's Kenny Lamons here. Happy Monday. Uh, welcome to Medicare Millennials, the channel where we chronicle our journey building our Medicare book of business and agency with you guys. And we just want to share training tips, tricks, and just share the overall Medicare opportunity with you. Today, I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about leads. They are the life source for any life and health agent and no different for Medicare agents. I mean, there's a lot of misinformation out there or information overload or just a complete lack of knowledge for some people on what type of leads you should work to get in front of qualified Medicare prospects. So I'm going to do a series. Ethan and I will do, do a deep dive in several different types of popular leads. But today we're going to talk about direct mail. It's been around a long time. It's not sexy. Um, and some people think it's too expensive or it's outdated, but the truth is it still works really well. Right now in this day and age of everybody selling over the phone, you may in fact uh, zig while they zag and see what your returns for direct mail actually go up and produce better for you right now. And you'll be selling a little bit more locally. So let's jump into it. Direct mail for Medicare, there's really three main categories at least that we've ever entertained. There's turning 65, there's generic chain Medicare changes. So this would talk about additional Medicare benefits. Um, Medicare has made changes that may affect you. And then there's duals. So just a low income mail piece that uh, may talk about the extra health program, Medicaid, uh, low income subsidy. And that's really what we use a lot of. We've used all three, but we mostly focused on duals and low income outside of AEP because we're able to sell them year round. So what are direct mail pieces? They are, it's an advertisement. It's typically a pretty generic advertisement that is mailed directly to your target consumer. And then they open it. They read that piece of mail. They're interested in it. So they fill it out and sign it, put it back in an envelope, put it in their mailbox and you get it a week later. Uh, so that it's, it is a little bit archaic, but as you can imagine, they kind of do a lot of work to respond to that direct mail piece. That's good. So that leads me to why we use them. So we use them for, I, I narrowed it down to four main reasons. One is they are very targeted. So what I mean is you can choose uh, the, if somebody's married, single, you can choose the income range. And most importantly, you can target to specific zip codes. So you can do a blanket an entire county if you know the demographics are good there, or you could just target certain zip codes within counties. So imagine uh, versus getting a statewide uh, Facebook campaign where your leads come from all over the place. What if you could narrow it down to a specific area and just get a bunch of leads from one specific area? That's very powerful. Uh, another reason why we use them is they're high intent. I talked about that. Somebody opened this piece of mail, they fill it all out, read it, and send it back to you. That just takes a little bit more work than click, click, click on their phone. Uh, they're great for long-term consistency. So we're going to get into how difficult it can be in the beginning to uh, get your campaign rocking and rolling. But long-term, they're very consistent. And they have a great shelf life. You'll notice a lot of uplines, IMOs, will actually resell age leads and B leads or whatever they want to call them. And, and a lot of agents make a living off of buying age leads. I, I prefer to get them first, but spend more money because of that. But they do have an excellent shelf life. Okay, so that's why we use them. Where do we get them and how much do they cost? So this a uh, little bit, where we get them is pretty straightforward. A mail house and they're a dime a dozen. They're all over the country. Um, not going to be hard to find a, a few that I've used is arm leads, like an arm lead concepts, need a lead. There's Kramer there. I mean, literally just Google direct mail advertisement and you'll get a million options. And really it, it's more of a nuance. Most of these, uh, mail houses have very similar lead pieces per category. So if you're doing T65, every mail house is going to have T65 pieces. Every mail house will have dual eligible uh, lead pieces. So it's more about the ease of use and uh, just the relationship that you have because their pricing should be pretty similar and their pieces should be pretty similar. So uh, when you're looking into it, just think about when you're choosing one, think more about the relationship and the ease of use with that company because the, the advertisement is more of a commodity. 
Um, and then you can also get them from a lot of uplines provide. And that's great if they have incentive based leads where it's either uh, subsidized costs or maybe even free. You can explore that option with your current upline or if you're shopping an upline, that's definitely something you want to take into consideration. I get a ton of support and leads from my upline. If you want to know more about that, reach out to me directly. Um, and then, so now that's where we get them. What about cost? Uh, they're going to range on average between four and $500 per 1000 pieces of mail. Okay. So that doesn't mean you get a thousand leads, of course, obviously. So to know there are what's called fixed price direct mail leads. I personally like to have a little more control. So I don't do that. Um, long story short, fixed price, they're going to, maybe it's 25, 30, $40. And they're just going to try to get mail as many pieces as they need to, to accomplish the number of leads you want back. I just find that nobody does it better than me. So as far as they don't, they're not personally vested in my lead job. It's too inconsistent to let put that control in someone else's hands. It's great for some, for me, let me explain how you would find out your lead cost if you did it on your own. So say that you pay $500 for a thousand pieces of mail. You mail out those thousand pieces to the county you want to work and you get 1% return. 1% of a thousand is 10 leads. So do simple math, $500 divided by 10 leads is $50 a lead. That's pretty steep. I would pay it if the, the lead quality was high enough, but you don't have to. I did a really conservative example there. We're gonna go for higher than 1% lead and we're probably gonna find a mail piece that's a little less than $500, but that gives you an idea. To count. So here's an example. I live in Texas. Ethan and I work the Dallas-Fort Worth area, both in and out of the city. A lot of rural stuff, but also we work the, the, the urban areas as well. So it's going to, but on average, okay, doing a low income dual eligible type piece, we get a 2% return. So if I mail 1500 pieces of mail costs me just under $700 um, and I'm going to at a 2% return, I'm going to get around 30 leads, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less, but let's just call it 30 leads. So that cost me about roughly $23 per lead. Not a bad deal. There's Facebook leads that cost more than $23. Um, and this is a lot stronger in my opinion. So that that you, you've got to learn how to do that basic math. It's not that complicated um, to figure out how much it's going to cost you per lead. So how do we use them now that we kind of know how to ca calculate the cost? If you're brand new to direct mail, and you go, you find a partner that's that, that's going to mail this stuff out for you. You pick a lead piece. They're going to give you some historic data, but that's a national average. I've never had a mail house be able to give me a really accurate picture based on the specific counties I want to work. So use that historic data that they give you on return rates just as a, a be, divide it by two and assume it's going to be less because, of course, they're selling you on using them. Um, so based on the historic data and then you looking at the counties or zip codes around you that you want to work. So if you're working low income, you may know very well there's certain parts in certain counties that you're going to you're going to focus on, probably not going to mail to the million dollar neighborhood or in your area. Um, so between the historic data and just some common sense looking at the market around you, if you're doing T65 going in for med subs as well, you might mail the richer area. If you're going on low income, you're not going to. So historic data and then a little, you got to do some homework on some common sense on what areas have a lot of the target demographic you're going after. Once you've done those two things, you have a rough estimate, you know, roughly where you want to mail, what demographic you're going to target and what you're hoping kind of return you'll get. But all of this is is kind of it's willy nilly until you actually go out there with your tentative plan mail several different places over the course of six, eight, 12 weeks. And then the process of it's a trial and error process of elimination. You're going to learn that you may be for low income. You add your income too high. You had too many people not eligible for Medicaid. Or if you want to have plenty of Medicare supplements, maybe you, you add your income range set too low or almost everyone you saw was more in line for a Medicare Advantage product. 
And then you're also going to find out, wow, I hated work in that county. That just didn't mesh well with the people. The return rates were low. And so through this process, you're going to tweak your demographics and you're going to tweak where you'll never go again. So you can eliminate that zip code, that county. I'm not working there again. And over the course of time, but you're making money all along. It's just the, the profitability is going to go up as time goes on because you know your area, you really fine tune your demographics, you know where not to mail. Track this in a simple Excel spreadsheet. This zip code or county, I mailed this many pieces and this was my percentage return. You can simply go back and refer to that and just X out the ones you never want to do again. Sounds complicated, but it's not, it's, it's going to pay off for you long term. Okay. So, um, and then once you know that over time, you can now, you have a desired goal. Maybe that's five Medicare plans a week. Maybe that's 20. But once you know your returns and you know the areas you like to work, you can just back engineer achieving that goal. So if you're getting a 2% return, then you will need to drop more pieces in all of your rotate, rotating counties versus if you were getting 4% return, then you may need to, you can spend a little less money and drop less leads to achieve your goal of 10 plans a week. Um, a, a couple of small things I didn't really touch on. In my experience with direct mail, you should be able to sell 40% of the leads that you receive, sometimes higher. Just it varies by area and what time of year it is, what product you're selling. But with Medicare, 40 to 50% is completely reasonable to expect of each lead you get back that you can convert 50% of those leads. And you may have to work up to that. But but um, And then another thing that you might need to know is that you can't just keep dropping the same area. So if you, if you loved a zip code that you worked in, you're going to need to wait 90 days to mail that again. Most mail houses won't even allow you to oversaturate that zip code. They'll black it out if you tried to mail it again um, within 90 days. Couple of pro tips here. So during AEP, when you're working Medicare, just know that direct mail plummets because everyone, all the big dogs, the IMOs, every agent and the carriers are mailing things out. So I personally don't even, uh, I pause my direct mail campaign from October to December, pick back up in January. And I work a mixture of referrals, um, people throughout the year that I could not help at the time, but I can help during the annual enrollment period and some Facebook leads. Sometimes I'll do final expense Facebook leads because that will lead me to a lot of Medicare clients. Um, another pro tip is just plan to, you're not, you should be profitable if you're well-trained and you follow just the basic things that I mentioned here on a direct mail campaign right away, but the profitability may be slimmer because you haven't weeded out your, the bad zip codes that you don't work well in. You haven't fine tuned your demographics. You're probably, if you're new to this, your sales skills are going to incline over time. So just know this is a long-term plan. You can't mail once. You can't mail once a month and be successful. You've got to plan this out, commit to it, have the money set aside or a partner that will, uh, uh, an IMO that's willing to help invest in you. Whatever the case is, it's going to cost money. And it's going to take some time to fine tune. It's a long-term consistency goal and a little bit different than a quick, fast Facebook uh, drop. Okay. And then one final thing, I, I didn't mention this, but when you place an order, you're typically not going to, they've got to process your order, mail the, the advertisement out, get, the, and then get it back. So just expect between three to five weeks. Um, so if I mail this week, I'll get it back around this same time in June, and then I'll mail again next week. I'll get it this third week of June. So I kind of plan everything that I mail. I'm expecting to work it four weeks in the future. So you got to get started now to sell in a month. Um, I hope this was really helpful for you guys. Um, I could have expanded a little bit deeper on a lot of the things with direct mail, but this should give you a, a solid understanding how they work, how we use them, what we like about them, and, and, and then some of the negatives on it as well. Please like and subscribe. And in the comments below, if you have any specific questions, throw them down there or email me directly. I always put my email in the description. Again, we'll see you guys next time on Medicare Millennials.